Hello, hello everyone. So today you'll see that you have your first draft of your dream book due. This is what all our hard work has been working towards, but I wanted to make sure that I walked you through the directions as specifically as possible so you knew exactly what I was expecting from you. So I'm gonna be posting this video. You can follow along with the directions that you have on your screen. So our instructions say, now that you've brainstormed and planned the key events for your dream book, write your first draft below. It doesn't have to be perfect because we'll use the next week to keep editing and revising until it's the best we can be. Remember to do your best because at the end of this unit, we'll be sharing with our family and friends. I'm gonna pause here because I wanna point out I said that we've brainstormed and planned key events for our dream book. So if we go back into our classwork, you'll see for this week, we created our key events develop theme, graphic organizer, and we created our types of conflict practice and our characters in conflict create themes practice. So we have our characters, we have our conflict, and we have key events already done. If you needed some inspiration, you can scroll back to week two, where we came up with our dream book summary and where we designed our dream book itself. Our first draft of our dream book should include clear, complete sentences, which means at least five paragraphs total, at least two main characters, a protagonist and an antagonist, at least two types of, of conflict that can include our character versus character, character versus self, character versus nature, or character versus society, and a plot that includes an opening scene rising action, a climax, falling action, and a resolution that ultimately lead to a clear theme or lesson for the main character. You're gonna scroll down and begin your story where you see begin your story here in red. Remember, this is just a first draft, so we just wanna get all of our ideas and key events out on the page. After you finish writing, you're gonna scroll back up to this rainbow rubric. It says, when you finish your work, when you finish, read your work and complete the rubric below to reflect on your effort. Then you are going to read out our different criteria. Our first criteria says, ideas and content. Good writers set out with a main purpose, with a main idea and a purpose in mind. The main idea is the point that they want to make. The purpose is how they will make that point. So if you score a four, if you give yourself a four, that means you're saying you had clear, focused, well-supported ideas, and you would go in and highlight here so that this one stood out as yellow. If you thought that your ideas were usually focused and supportive, you would highlight here. Two points says that ideas are sometimes unfocused and undeveloped. And one point is if your ideas are confusing and unsupported. Let's keep going. Next is organization. When you write, you need to put the ideas in an order that makes sense. So, it's like the way that a skeleton holds our bodies together. It holds things together and gives them shape. So if you have four points, that means that you have a smooth flow of your ideas from beginning to end. So you would highlight this one if you think that you had a smooth flow of ideas from beginning to end. Information given in some order gives you three points. Little direction from beginning to end gives you two points and ideas that are hard to follow with no direction only gets you one point. Voice. Voice is the you that comes through in your writing and that makes it interesting. 
voice reveals tone and style, as well as your personality. Writers with a strong voice engage their readers and speak directly to them. Voice shows that the reader knows about a topic and cares about it. So if you have honest, engaging, and exciting writing, that'll be four points. At time it reveals your personality, that would be three points. If it fails to engage the audience or show emotion, that's only two points. And if it's flat writing with no feeling, that is only one point. Almost done. Word choice. Have you noticed that good writers choose their words carefully? Strong verbs, exact nouns, and vivid adjectives make their writing clear and lively. If you use precise, interesting, and accurate words, you'll get four points. If you use correct and adequate words, you'll get three points. Limited vocabulary that lacks freshness, you'll get two points, and an incorrect, dull, or overused words will get you one point. Sentences. Good writing flows smoothly. It is a pleasure to read aloud. Different links and kinds of sentences create a rhythm and style. If your sentences are smooth, varied, and have rhythmic sentences, then you'll get four points. If they're generally smooth and they're a little varied, then you'll get three points. If they're awkward or wordy sentences with little variety, you'll get two points. And if they're choppy sentences that are run-ons or fragments, or you use overused connectors, you'll get one point. Finally, the conventions, like the conventions we've been practicing every morning. Conventions are the rules for our written language. They're signals that help the reader understand our writing. For example, sentences begin with capital letters and end with punctuation. Punk paragraphs are indented. Grammar and spelling follow patterns. If you have excellent control with only minor errors, you'll get four points. If you have good control and no serious errors preventing your understanding, that'll be two points. Weak control with errors that make writing hard to read will get two points. And many errors that prevent understanding will be one point. So as a reminder, this is your rubric. So you are assessing your own work. So you're telling me how you think you did. So if you think that your ideas were clear and focused, you would highlight here. But if you say, okay, maybe this is something I really need to work on, then instead you would maybe say, sometimes my ideas are unfocused and underdeveloped. This helps me know how you think you did and what you most want to work on. When you look at the assignment itself, what you'll see when you open it up is a rubric. That includes the rubric that I will be grading. So once it's graded, you'll be able to go back in and see what specific parts I think you should focus on. And we'll work together to make your work even stronger. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always talk to me on GoGuardian or send me a message on ClassDojo. Remember, this is only draft one. We just wanna make sure that our work is as strong as it can be so we're putting our best effort first. Thanks everybody.